Hello, we're going to talk about magnetic locators and the products and how they react to various steel targets or ferrous targets that are buried below the earth. A magnetic field is detected by these instruments because the steel itself creates its own magnetic properties. When it is buried within the earth and it having its own magnetic property, the two magnetic fields collide and create a distortion of sorts and our instruments will react to that distortion. The 52CX is, has the longest tube and what that represents is that sensor separation within this tube has the furthest separation allowing for this product to have the most sensitivity to find deeper targets and also very small ferrous targets. This is the volume knob on the GA52CX and this is the sensitivity switch. Again as you increase the sensitivity you can see deeper targets from farther away. For the GA52CX, it has a five position sensitivity switch. Next is the 72CD. Its tube is a little bit shorter. Therefore, the sensors within the tube are also shorter in, in separation. It has the next sensitivity to find still various survey targets and as well as utility targets. For the model 72CD, the volume and sensitivity adjustments are under underneath the bottom of the can at the top. This is the volume switch, and this is the sensitivity that has four positions. The 92 XTD is the short collapse portable unit. It therefore has the shortest tube and has the least amount of sensitivity. It is still good for utility applications and most survey pin targets and boundary markers, uh, but for very small petite targets it would not be the best unit of choice. There's just two adjustments. One is the speaker volume adjustment up and down and the other one is the sensitivity adjustment. This is the adjustment that you'll be using from time to time to adjust for how deep a target is or how big it is. The magnetic field that's detected by these locators is also going to be subject to the orientation of the object that's buried below. These objects can be oriented at every degree from vertical to horizontal. The following depictions will indicate how the unit reacts as far as how it peaks out over a vertical target and how it peaks over a horizontal target. On the ground is a horizontal target made out of steel. Uh, this is a ground stake, but it has the properties of having a magnetic field on the opposing ends of this stake. I'm going to demonstrate the 52CX and show you by the tones how it reacts to the magnetic field on the imposing ends. The tone goes up when it sees this end of the stake. It'll quiet over the midpoint or the neutral part of the magnetic field along the object and it'll arise and peak out on the other end. If you go beyond the edge of the target, the tone goes down. This is where the distortion of the magnetic field is created on one end and on the other end. All right, this is the Model 72 CD, which adds a polygraphic bar segment display that gives you another level of indication of the polarity of the object and the opposing magnetic fields at the end of the target. Watch the display as I approach the end of the stake. You'll see that the bar graphs have gone up, coinciding with the audio tone, and you'll see a positive polarity there. As I move and sweep across the middle of the stake target, you'll see it neutral or almost neutralized. And then as I reach the opposing end, the magnetic field goes the opposite direction, so now we have a negative bar graph until I get beyond the target where it goes quiet again. This is the GA92 XTD magnetic locator with the same graphic display that you saw earlier with the 72 CD. Watch the representation of the bar graph as it sweeps across the ground stake. The larger the steel target, the bigger the magnetic field and the better the detection for the instrument. I'm going to show you now a very small target called a PK nail 
and then a very large target in comparison, which is a water valve cover, and how the model GA52 reacts at the same sensitivity to both. The movement I just showed, moving the instrument around the outlying area of the cover is kind of a crosshair kind of movement over the target. And this way as I bring the magnetic locator into the perimeter of the cover and the unit goes up in tone and peaks over the edges, I'm able to get an outline and shape of the object. We're now going to go locate various utility targets that some of that are exposed at the surface and some that are buried below ground so you get an idea and understanding of the various applications these magnetic locators can be used. Some of these are objects will have multiple layers of steel welded or jointed together. In those cases the magnetic field will have a little bit more distortion as joints from a bar to an edging will collide and come together. The unit will still react to the outside perimeter of the target, but it may react to different elevated tone levels. This next application is to detect um, a joint or a transition phase between two steel pipeline sections as they come together. Because the pipes are made out of steel and therefore ferrous, there's going to be a magnetic field distortion at that point of the joint. I'm going to try to detect that now with the magnetic locator. Things to note when using a magnetic locator. Not all steel objects have ferrous content and therefore don't have a magnetic field. One of those is stainless steel. Uh, it has very little or no ferrous content within it at all and therefore won't, would not be detectable by a magnetic locator. Other things to watch out for when you're uh, locating is uh, keeping the instrument away from steel toe construction boots. It will react to that or any other steel objects that you may have on your tool belt or pockets, especially if you have the sensitivity increased. Also things to look out for are other above ground ferrous targets such as fence lines, guard rails, and parked cars. Because they contain steel, they'll have a magnetic signature. Using this diagram, this is the technique that you would use to locate a buried facility that's made out of steel and try to avoid the above ground target. 